there, I'm Gretel Colleen and this is Big Brother. It's Saturday night, time to strip down, coat ourselves in egg and roll around in the breadcrumbs of gossip, news and intrigue that have spilt all over the Big Brother table this week. It makes for an interesting dish. A little spicy, a little juicy, definitely fattening. Let's have a taste. Tonight, Todd's secret message from the house, what was he trying to tell Bianca? Ben and Gemma see the lives they left behind and a fiery on-set debate. Lisa, boring, brilliant or somewhere in the middle. Also on the show, you'll see the week's highlights, catch up on the last 24 hours in the house and delve into the dirty dishes of share house life with the author of He Died With a Falafel in His Hand, John Birmingham. But first, let's walk around and kick the tires on the big fella, Ben. Now, in case you've forgotten, this is a game show and Ben is a player who looks to have his eye on the prize. He plays with a straight bat. Will he still be there at stumps? Big Brother's fearless woman in the field, Sammy Lucas, checked his form. Ben is the dark horse of the housemates. He's everybody's buddy, he's the quiet achiever, and a lot of people are saying that he might just have what it takes to be the last man standing and walk away with a quarter of a million dollars in cash. But we don't know a lot about Ben. He keeps his cards pretty close to his chest. So I'm about to go on a journey of discovery to find out what makes Big Ben tick. OK, Ben is single, so I guess it's safe to say his main love in life is sport. Now, he's actually quite good friends with a few players from the Sydney Swans, and I've been sent along to a Swans training session to interview a few of the guys about Ben. Very happy about this assignment. Who went to Thailand with Three. Ben? Yeah. Three. Did you share a hotel room with him? No, but he was the first man I ever saw skull three cans of Heineken while parasailing. <laughs> He's inside the house, no radio, no TV, no newspapers. How hard is it for a sports mad person to be cut off from the world during footy season? Oh. Halfway through footy season, he couldn't have gone in there Super in the worst yeah. Finals on this week, that'll kill him. Have you noticed any romantic sparks flying around Ben's direction in the house? Gemma, she's staying away from most of the blokes, but I think she's the closest with Ben. Why do you think that is? Has he got that sort of appeal to women? He, yeah, he's a pretty he's a pretty quiet type of bloke. There's a few outspoken blokes on the show, I think, but... Um... He's a big, cuddly teddy bear. Mm. I want to give him a hug now. Oh, just oh, maybe you should all give each other a hug. Oh. Go on, hug for Ben. Yeah. Hug for Ben. Oh. Go, Benny. Go, Ben. The Epping Hotel in Sydney, Ben's favourite watering hole. Now, his mates tell me that while Ben may be tucked away in the Big Brother house in Queensland, he's always here in spirit. Guys, this is really sad. You're missing him this much. Yeah, we are. We uh, take him to, you know, all our night spots because uh, we're hoping we can uh, pick up chicks this way. So, you know, it hasn't worked yet, but we're still trying. Oh, Time he's so sweet. sweet. He sponsors a, a kid in, um, where, is it, where is it, Uganda. Oh, yeah. champion. So, um, oh, I love Ben. Yeah. Why did he go in the house? I've actually got the real reason. Uh, he wanted me to say this. It's to... Um, meet flick off neighbours. Since it's a Channel 10 thing, uh, he thought it was his big chance to, to meet flick off neighbours. So he's a neighbours nut. But I mean, I'm, I'm happy enough because my dream was to meet Sammy Lucas. And... Oh! <laughs> Put it here. Oh, you boys are even nicer than Benny. Ben's father, Clive, and you can see where he gets his good looks. Now, Clive, is this exactly how Ben left his room when he headed off to Big Brother? As if he left a minute ago. <laughs> And as you see, Godfather, which is his, uh, the poster there, favourite film, Simpsons Freak. Looking at the show, it seems to be, to me, is very much what is like at home. And I'm pleased about that. Love looking at baby photos. Little Booba, how old is he there? I think it'd be about a year old. Uh, oh, he's so cute. Divine. Have you got a favourite baby photo? Yeah, this one, actually. It looks like a Mohican, but the way his <laughs> hair is running. What are you missing most about him in the house? Well, I can recommend to all parents, if you can, get rid of your children for three months because you save on the telephone. You can go and have a shower and there's hot water instant, which is a rarity. Food bills? Minimal. Oh. 
because feeding him 6'4", Ben, 6'4", 6'5", and it's literally like stoking the QE2. <laughs> so I'm saving a fortune. And while Ben loves a laugh and a good time, he carries a serious secret. Earlier this week, Ben confided in his housemates about a rare disease he has. And there's, there's no cure for what I've got, and I can't have lenses to help me see. Like glasses or contacts, they just can't give me them that'll help me see. Yeah. And there's a possibility that I could be fully blind by the time I'm 30. Oh, uh, what? You serious? Mm. Really? Dead serious. Joining me now is the fabulous Todd, most recent evictee from the Big Brother house. How are you feeling? Superstar? Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> you feel like a superstar? Oh, uh, yeah, why not? I have to ask you something. <laughs> why not? There was an article in the newspaper this week that said that the male housemates, when they were being chosen for the Big Brother house, were asked about their penis size. Just... Did you have that? No, I didn't. You, and, nobody uh, asked you? I've asked everybody that was uh, interviewed throughout the audition process and no one's mentioned a thing. Did anyone say, are you sexually active because we want people to have sex in the house? No. Righty-ho, let's move right along. Look at you. <laughs> You've become very media savvy, I'm, I'm, haven't I'm you? I'm like this. I know, because you're thinking, do I have a big penis? <laughs> OK. Now, you've become very media savvy, obviously, because you are now a rock star. When did you first realise that? Uh, we went into Dreamworld. Yep. On the Monday after the eviction. Everyone was ready with cameras, uh, paper, pens, having a ball. Um, everyone's just really warm, really friendly, got really nice things to say. Were you scared that you might be treated as a bit of a loser? He's out of the house, he's, he's not the king? Um, not really, I wasn't, because I didn't necessarily go in there to become the king. Oh, didn't you? No. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I just, I, I was hoping for a good reaction and I think And you I, got I, it? I've gotten one so far. And I understand you've had a little bit of experience as a reporter and we'll be seeing your footage a bit later. So can you stick around? Sure. Yeah, because Todd's girlfriend Bianca will be joining us after the break and we will also discover the secret message he desperately tried to send her from the house. Who do you think is going to be nominated? Oh, God, I hope it's Gemma. You think you don't like Gemma? Oh, no. Why not? Oh, she annoys me with those bloody clothes hanging up yeah. the shoulders. Oh, no. Nah. The makeup's a little bit too much. Yeah, no, nah, she's too prima donna constantly. Yeah, nah. yeah. And who's your favourite? Well. Apart from me. I was going to say that. I didn't want to see you leave, but Blair and Gemma. Blair and Gemma? You think they're a bit of a, a hot item? Please, yeah. Oh, they're hot. Both of them are hot. So, uh, what do you think about the way that I smell, matey? Mate, that's a lot of bull dust. You don't smell at all. Yeah, no, you're too bad yourself, actually. Look. It's all right. Shame. Good after <laughs> What do you think so far is the most memorable uh, moment that's gone into the house? I reckon when Sarah Marie did the trick with the boob. The, that, the that drink? so funny. Yeah, the drink. No, no, no. no. When Sarah Marie's in bed with the two guys and oh, yeah. he's amazed how big her boobs are and she's like, hey, woo! <laughs> <laughs> The planets. The planets. Yeah. So they've said Johnny's got a kiss of death. Yeah, um, yeah, he's a bit sneaky. Writes everyone off behind their back. I don't like him. I think he should be off. You're a boyer? Slightly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to smell me? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the Duna dancing that's been going on so far? Um, well, my husband and I were actually talking about it. Really, if you want to do something like that, wouldn't you sort of get between the two beds? That's not the first time I've heard that, actually. Give us a bum dance. I don't, I don't know how to do it, mate. You, you I, me. the, I don't know how to do it. Turn around. Three, come on, that. Dreadlocks are cool. It's a bit of the Samson effect, no, though, isn't it? I'm looking better without dreadlocks. Finding new girlfriends everywhere now. This is fantastic. And uh, your girlfriend Bianca will be here in a minute to talk about that. Yeah, I'm on a leash after that one. Are you? I think, yep. Yeah. Now, you must be quite proud because the item that you brought from the Big Brother house, the one that has gone up for auction, exceeded $2,200 in the bidding. Definitely so impressed. Which, I thought it was an ashtray. Which, in fact, you haven't all. signed. So I might get you to do that now, if that's Do you think right. that'll increase the value? <sighs> Wouldn't it? Let's have a look. I bet you've used this for a few interesting things, now that I see yeah. how it's actually constructed. <laughs> yes, yeah. OK. Now, tell me, um, what's the story behind this? Um, this particular mask oh, was, was a birthday present given to me by my sister. And I just felt that if I was you know, putting something up for auction to a worthwhile cause, and to something that's been ignored, I think, uh, to the extent that it has, being um, the teenage suicide. Teenage suicide is the cause that you're sending the money to. Yeah, yeah. And um, I thought, well, you know, if I'm asking people 
to look into their hearts and to dig deep, deep into their pockets, then I should be doing exactly the same. So, was this mask given to you at an important time in your life? It was. I'd just come through um, some serious breakups, um, a, a fair bit of life changing experience going on at the time. And why is the cause of youth suicide, why is that important to you? Um, well, I think everybody knows how hard it can be to be a teenager, to be a kid. Did you find it difficult? Definitely. Um, and so a lot of my friends did too, and a lot of depression and things like that. What were the things that you found particularly difficult? As a teenager? Yeah. I did a lot of moving. Um, I went to a lot of high schools. Moving because of family breakup and stuff? Uh, yeah, and just the uh, travelling sort of family. So, you know, it was sometimes it was pretty difficult to finally make, you know, to make a lot of friends and feel really close and then get ripped away. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty tough when you're, when you're that age. So did you need to turn to anyone to help you or did you grow out of it? I think um, I did grow out of it, but through the help of you know, some, some older friends. Uh, without them, I don't know really where, I'll, where I'd be right now. Um, so, yeah, I think it's if, if people can ask for help, you know, they definitely should. Now, the other thing that, of course, is intriguing about you, mister, other than that fabulous donation that you're making there, is this message that you left on the whiteboard <laughs> in the house. Yes. What is that about? <laughs> Please tell us what the message said. Um, I do recall mentioning uh, there was a, a marriage proposal. This has been a bit of a... I hesitate to use the word joke, but it's been part of Bianca and I's humour. Could so I just bring Bianca in and see sure. if she's sharing this joke? <laughs> Bianca, welcome. Thank you. This is Bianca, Todd's girlfriend <laughs> and partner. And uh, are you still talking to him? Is this a oh, joke, course. talking about marriage? Um, it has been for us, I guess. He's asked me several times. <laughs> I don't mm. think he's joking. <laughs> well, I don't he... think you are. I think you really want to marry her and you're scared of her answer. Well, she hasn't said yes yet. All right, well, the big question is, do you live together? No. You don't? No. Why not? Well, we actually, we're used to, so, yeah. Oh, so you've and... been there, done that? Yeah. <laughs> Gee, lucky you didn't get married, isn't it? Yeah. He is went he to an all-boys house and went to an all-girls house, so... <laughs> and do you think that's why your marriage, sorry, relationship lasts? <laughs> Um, the seed. <laughs> I think there's a point where you have to say, OK, we need to move on if there's any troubles or whatever, and that's what we did, and we're still happy. Thank you very much for joining us. Todd, can you stick around, please? Sure. Because John Birmingham will be joining us very soon. He is the author of He Died With a Falafel in His Hand, and he will be here to talk about the perils of life in share houses. Now, one girl that the boys of Australia would love to share a house with is Gemma. According to the polls on bigbrother.com.au, she is the most popular female in the house, some even think in the world. Our own blonde bombshell, Sammy Lucas, glossed her lips and investigated the Gemma phenomenon. Gemma. I reckon she's sexy. Gemma's actually one of my favourites, I must say. She's good. Lovely sword. I, I hope she's there till the end. I hope she wins, actually. Oh! Yeah. OK, here we are at the Look Agency on Trendy Fitzroy Street in Melbourne. This is where Gemma works as a hair and makeup artist. There's the bookers busily booking away. Hi, guys. <laughs> now, Gemma's days are spent crimping, curling, creating looks for all the beautiful people. Look at all these gorgeous models on the wall. I hear she's even made up a few famous faces, Tina Arena and Bon Jovi, if you don't mind. Oh, look at this. Here's a photo of Gemma at work. Oh, isn't she gorgeous? <gasps> wonder if that's someone famous. She's got a strong idea of what she wants and she quite often like will cross me like I'll tell her what I want and then she'll turn around and say no she doesn't agree that's going to work with the makeup so she's quite strong really. How does that wash with you a bit of confrontation? I like it I like <laughs> it it's good. You work with models every day do you think Gemma's got what it takes to be in front of the camera? Definitely. Gemma's got beautiful persona, great characteristics, beautiful girl, great smile and great fun to be around. Uh, I definitely think she could pull it off on the other side of the camera. Myself 
a lot of people are spending a lot of time talking about the beautiful Gemma in internet chat rooms. None more so than Mark, fan club member. So Mark, how much time do you spend a day in chat rooms talking Gemma? Oh, a couple of hours a day at least. <laughs> and how much time looking at the house? Oh, another couple. <laughs> Just to see Gemma? Well, she's a little, got a lot to do with it. What would you like to say to a boyfriend? Oh, crumbs, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he's the luckiest man in the world? He's damn lucky, yeah. Real lucky. Tell us exactly how you love Birds Met. I was DJing here on a Sunday afternoon and I spotted her out in the crowd. Was it love at first sight? Sure, definitely. Do you miss your boyfriend? Yeah. Badly. Yeah, I do, yeah. Are you glad she's keeping her undies on in the shower? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> she did mention the fact that she was going to keep them on, but I think that was more the fact that, um, Anyway, if she wanted to keep it to herself and if people want to see it, well, maybe she might show it afterwards, you never know. Ooh! Well, I think Gordon might be sort of getting under his skin a bit, only because he's starting to get a bit too full on, a bit too close. I think she's been a bit intimidated. I said you were lovely. Uh, <laughs> three months in there without male contact, you've got, to, you've got to get something. OK, so you wouldn't mind if she had a bit of a cuddle? No, not at all. Yeah. What about a pash? Pash, well, now we're starting on that, that oh, fine line. Draw the line at the Draw the, the line at the pash. She's actually a successful businesswoman, yeah? She is. She's got two two flats. Ooh. I think that we haven't seen the ballsy Gemma, the clever Gemma. There's lots of sides to Gemma that we haven't seen yet at all. She always says two hours to get ready, but it usually takes three. Um, the other thing is, is I was asking about getting the girls and I um, some lip gloss because we've gone through it. And this is for all the Gemma's lip gloss fans out there. <laughs> and on my latest count, Gemma squeezed 3,472 different tops into her Big Brother suitcase. She has never worn the same one for more than four hours. And someone who'd notice is Gordon. And this week, the guys from Triple M's Clum Veg are on Gordon's case. They've written a new song, we've cut a new clip, and this is it. Gordon's so bad, his toothbrush hair is flashy, Lear, he's changing gear, he looks at Gemma and he says, You're lovely. And Gemma said to Lisa, I think Gordon wants a piece of me, but Lisa fencing him says, You're lovely. Then Gordon circles round, he wants to pounce and dance into her pants, he sees a chance and then he says, You're lovely. And when he leaves and sees she voted for him, cause he's sleazy, will he still be smitten, will he say, You're lovely, you're lovely. I think that's going to become a weekly thing. Now, Gordon, Lisa and Peter are up for eviction this week. And once again, the votes are very close. Let's check how it's running. No names, of course, but two of them are neck and neck. Now, if you think the house would be better without Lisa, call 1902 555011. We'll give you the numbers for Gordon and Peter a little later in the show. Calls cost 55 cents, including GST, and voting closes at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Sunday, the 27th of May. Back after this for an update on life in the house over the past 24 hours. Ten years ago, a show like Big Brother would have been technologically impossible, and perhaps even impossible to imagine. But now it is very real. Let's peer through the one-way mirrors and watch the last 24 hours in the life of nine strangers, aged between 19 and 30, and one black Kelpie, aged five. Ebony is the first awake, and she's already getting the feeling she's being watched. I've seen it at least before. I think the camera's sort of been bugging me for the last day or two. That's what I said to you this uh, morning. I just want them to go away. Just for a minute, just, just, just even for 10 minutes. It's only Ebony's second day as the 10th housemate and she's settling in comfortably. But is she and Blair becoming inseparable? <laughs> You're such a wuss. You're such a wuss. You're a cute little wuss, aren't you? 
so nice. Sarah Marie yeah. shows Gordon how she copes with the cameras in this the Big the cool Brother one, house. Feel good? Yeah, because you just see the two trees and just the sky. Exactly. Hey, Gordon. Yeah. Look over your head. Keep your head straight, but roll your eyes as far back as you can. You'll see the trees that you love. Oh, uh, cool. Doesn't that look wicked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really wicked. Doesn't it look awesome? It's amazing what you see laying down here. If you look all around you, it's like the trees are like the barrier, and then inside's the blue sky. Yeah. And you can hardly see any cameras. I can't see any. Yeah, like the world was on my shoulders a bit. And like today, I was noticing when I woke up, I just wanted the cameras to get off me just for 10 minutes. I was like, I was ready to just go, would you just piss off? Mm -hmm. Just leave me alone just for a minute, can you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when you wake up, you're like, pull your thing back and it's like zooming in on you. And you're just like, oh, for God's sake. Can you give me five First thing in the morning, last thing at night. Yeah. I love it. Oh, it's every time I see it. I always do a couple of these ones. I just, you know what? I'm around. I think it's when you funny. Walk by, as. It's funny, isn't it? And you look yeah. back and it hasn't followed you. I'm a fing interest. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but then what's wrong with me? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's Peter's birthday, and Ebony has left him a present. Ebony may be Blair's best mate, but he, unlike Ben, is unaware of her little indiscretion. No sleep, mate. Hey. <laughs> Everything just did a grow. <laughs> Raj, shut up. Blair is Dog's best friend. When we return, John Birmingham and Todd join me to write their names on the milk and talk about share houses. To see Gordon on the eviction stage, call 1902 555010. And if you want to vote Peter out, we'll give you his number later. Welcome back to Big Brother, where our couch is being warmed by the bottoms of two experts in the art of share house living. John Birmingham, author of the hilarious novel He Died with a Falafel in His Hand, and Todd, who just left a house which he shared with 11 others on national television. So, what are your observations, John? Uh, I wouldn't mind. It's kind of psychotic. I, I, I find myself watching it almost 24-7 and wanting to be there, like wanting to play the game, you know. You want to be in the house yeah, with cameras just, on just, you all just, the time? Oh, maybe not with the cameras, but I just, like, I just see it and it's like so many other houses I lived in, like all the same sort of broken personalities are in there, all the same games are being played and I just, I want to get back in the game, Gretel. What do you mean all the same? Do you think there are types of personalities in a share house? 
Uh, yeah, I, I felt like I lived, you had 35 houses, didn't you? Yeah, well, you've probably done the same as me. <laughs> I had about 100 flatmates before I gave it up. There are only about eight or nine housemate stories, but there are like infinite variations of it. So, you know, you've got the conniving flatmate and the smelly flatmate and uh, the mad flatmate and the Would lazy like to... flatmate. Sorry to interrupt them. Can you tell us the conniving one in this house is? Um, it's Johnny. It's just, it is so Johnny. I watched him with uh, Shana. She had the big spit and then they had that magnificent uh, two-hour comic. This is where you miss out in the house. Like, you know, you really need the, the little screen so you can watch everybody. He had that magnificent bedroom conversation with her. It was like, oh, Shana, you know, I you love, love you. you. I love you. I love you. Arm around as the stiletto came out and <laughs> in it came. He gave her the two points. All right, the smelly one, who would that be? <laughs> Well, you're okay now, Toddy. Like, Seems I don't know what they were. I don't know what they were going on about. So. Who's the lazy one, Todd? Uh, Sarah Marie. Sarah Marie. What other types? Um, Sarah Marie's also the whiny one, I think. Oh, lazy, do you need a whinger? Yeah, you, you do need a whinger, a whinger and a whiner, and she sort of com combines the two. Tell me, why don't they argue in the house, Todd? Why didn't anyone ever have a fight? Everybody's too scared to uh, to say the wrong thing, though. From day one, they've been too scared to step on each other's toes for fear of eviction. If you think about a normal house that you live in, a share house, the first four or five weeks, it's like a job interview. Everybody's on their best behaviour, and you know they're they're in their best clothes, and it all falls to pieces after that. But. Um, that's what this place is like, but the whole time you've got Big Brother like looming over them, cranking up the pressure, and um, suddenly someone's going to drink the last. Bad behaviour is trying. Well, you know, Shana, look what happened to her. She let just let it go. Yeah. But do you think that's typically Australian? I thought we voiced our opinions and we, and we were happy with that. We didn't. We got kicked out. But the pressure's really beginning to tell. You're lucky you got kicked out. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Completely. What about the people who become lovebirds in a house? We've all been oh, in share houses where suddenly I, there's a team I, of two. I, I cannot believe the ballerina is, is falling for Pete. I just, he is going to rip her heart out, put her on a stick and have it with a big onion ring, I reckon. Really? Oh, um, oh, how completely. do you know that? I just, because I've lived with a hundred guys like that. It just, it is just... Oh, hundred metres. If he goes out this week, dude, he is going to be living the life, let me tell you. Yeah, he's going to have babes on call. Yeah, uh, just... Uh, uh, she'll probably, you'll probably have to lock the door really quickly so she doesn't run out after it. So. All right, both being share household experts, who do you think is going to win? Well, let's start with you, Todd. Who do you think? Uh, my, my opinion's changing on that all the time, but I think Ben's rearing ben. his head mm, yeah. a lot. Is it possible for a girl to win in this situation, or is that just un-Australian? It's, it's really tough. Um, Sarah Marie's got a whole city behind her, so she may well. Um, I thought for a while Gemma would. Like, I watched her at work and was very impressed with her work, you know. <laughs> but um, I don't think so. I, I suspect that uh, she'll be there maybe three or four weeks from the end, but, you know, eventually maybe Johnny will do for her. <laughs> Oh, I love you, Gemma. The kiss. But at <laughs> the end right. of the day, we love a good Aussie bloke. Thank you both of you for joining us, Thanks, John mate. and Todd. Well, now the studio that we're in right now is actually an attraction at Dreamworld on the Gold Coast. When you're here, you can sit in the only existing replica of the famous Big Brother diary chair. And this week, visitors had a surprise guest on that chair. Nomination time. Who gets two points? Who do you nominate? OK, I'll nominate uh, Cher Marie, because I think um, two times, three times, she's out. Gordon. You're nominating Gordon yeah. for two points? Um, yes, two points, because he's um, too sleazy and um, he annoys me how he's after Gemma all the time and he doesn't get the hint that uh, she's telling him to back off. Well, today I'm going to give two votes for Lisa. I think she's a bit boring. She can be a little bit boring, she can't she? Can, yeah. Gordon. You don't like Gordon? No, he's too sure of himself. Is he? Yes. You don't like the haircut either? Oh, his haircut I don't mind. It's his attitude I don't like. Yeah, who do you think will win? I don't know. What about out of the girls? Mm -hmm. You got a favourite girl? No. Right. No. Yeah, they're the ones that smell, aren't they? Hmm. <laughs> With Todd free to roam in the outside world, the house began the week with a flood of tears. Soon after that, they were up to their necks in nomination tension and all the other trials and tribulations of a week under the watchful eye of Big Brother. And who is it? Who is it? Todd. Todd. Oh! 
See you guys. Jesus. So quick. See ya. Hey, buddy. Have a ball. See you guys. I feel terrible because we've been voted twice and we've only been voted once. Todd's departure this week caught the housemates by surprise. Been a blast. I honestly thought that I'd go today. <laughs> so I prepared myself to leave. I know I wouldn't have to leave. And it's just, the, the, and the thing is that I feel bad about is that Todd was one of my votes. I can't see why. Why is Todd out? I wasn't expecting Todd to go at all. There's one housemate that, it's not that I don't like him, but He's so cynical. I, I, I just, I really thought it was going to be him. And Gemma was like, you know, really upset, and she's got this like really standoff nature with, um, with guys. It's time for this week's nominations. First person is Gordon. 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 Lisa. 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 She's a bit of a fence sitter. Peter. 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 He keeps going through my things and wearing my clothes. There are three nominations. Gordon, Lisa, and Peter. Oh. This week. The reactions from the nominees so was revealing. It really piss me off if I was to get off and find out that the person that had voted me, had selected me, hugged me, was one of the first people to hug me as soon as I found out. I'm um, you know, sitting around farting and being obnoxious and making rude crass calls and... Oh, but I think it's all in good humour. Oh, of course it is, but I mean, there's a few people in the house that are pretty straighty 180. I've probably got a big enough ego to keep everything in positive mode. <laughs> big Brother is now playing us an episode from last week in which I oh. assaulted the chickens. Hey, get out of there! Get out of there! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Didn't mean to connect then. <laughs> I'm just coming in to um, apologise for the treatment of the chickens earlier last week. Peter's punishment over the next three weeks is to be sole carer of the chickens. His duties will be to clean the chook house, feed and look after their general well-being. In an interesting twist, the housemates must ensure the punishment is carried out or else they will lose 50% of their weekly budget. This week's weekly task was to make a life-size replica of one other person out of chicken wire and paper mache. They were required to be freestanding and within two centimetres of the model's dimensions. The housemates were confident enough to bet a massive 60% of their budget on this week's task. It's time to announce the results of this week's task. Six of them <laughs> measured correctly. Six. Only two were deemed to be recognisable. You have failed. Your budget <laughs> next week will be $88. Oh. <laughs> this week we saw Sarah Marie suffer with severe back pain. Oh my God, I got really sharp. Do you want to... Oh. Hang on a minute, I can't even breathe. No way, I'm serious. Luckily, the ever-present Johnny was there to help. Yeah, keep going, but... Or was he? She woke up this morning and said, I've got a sore back. And it's like, well, you know, what do you want from us? What do you want from me? While Ben was hard at work making Gordon's body double, a noise outside became an exciting distraction. Oh, did you see? Yeah. Oh, 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 parachutist! 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 He missed the target. <laughs> he missed the target. He missed the target. One of the first things the housemates did for fun when they arrived was to write oh, yeah, lyrics uh -oh. for a house song. Oh, oh, yeah, uh -oh. When they were finished, oh, Big Brother yeah, uh -oh. let them choose the tune and then recorded it professionally. The Big Brother is watching. Existing every day in this house with no privacy. This is the price we pay, exploited personalities. About your request for the dog. Yep. It'll be arriving tonight. <laughs> Next year is a lot of instructions and a book about Kelpies. Please take that envelope and read it to all the housemates. Hey! I've got to read this out. 
So, yeah, he's read it out. So we've got a whole book Books on, on it. it. <laughs> Someone's written a book on Australian Kelpie. Your new housemate is ready to be welcomed to the Big Brother house. Ebony is a five-year-old black Kelpie. Five-year-old. Five year she loves the company of friends, yes. but you must ensure that her arrival is stress-free. Stress Please tell me he wasn't kissing her. He is. Yes. Of course I am. Yeah. How was he kissing her? I was doing this and she just licked my nose. And your Did she lips. lick your lips? Yeah, she I licked his lips. Do you know what she does with that mouth? The dog snores really, really badly. Big Brother did not enjoy Pete's treatment of the chickens. Wonder how he feels about battery hens. This week he's up for eviction for the second time. To vote Pete out, call 1902 555012. After the break, Lisa is under attack and her best friend comes to her defence. While everyone has an opinion about the Big Brother housemates, not everyone's opinion is the same. In some countries, people who disagree are taken away and buried in the hills. But here in Australia, we put them on stage in front of a few cameras and let them slug it out with words. Tonight's topic is Lisa, unrecognised talent or uninteresting person. On the attack, Brisbane Triple M personality, Sammy Powers. On the defence, one of Lisa's best mates from Melbourne, Julie Baxter. What is your opinion? What have you got against Lisa, Sammy? Well, actually, uh, my opinion goes up and down because I watched her the other night and I thought, wow, she's actually not as dead dull as I thought. She's become more animated and more interesting. And then I realised it was the dummy of her sitting <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> so, you know, it changes. The paper mache dummy. Yes. <laughs> what, what's the problem that you had with her? Why do you think she's so dull? Well, you know, she doesn't do anything. She doesn't say anything. She, she doesn't just, give any opinions, you think? I mean, I don't know if, if I'm wrong. And she, is she frozen? She's your friend. <laughs> is she, has she frozen? <laughs> is that too rude? <laughs> Oh, everyone's entitled to their opinion of Lisa and I probably know Lisa better than most people will ever see her from the other side of the camera. Lisa is a girl that has got lots of strong opinions and she's very colourful and bright and I think when you get her in a situation when she's in a house like that and, well, the house that she's in, the Big Brother house, with all the people that are there with such strong personalities, um, it's probably hard for her to shine amongst that. She usually is quite spontaneous and that's the Lisa I know and will come out with things and she's not doing it so I don't know whether she's very conscious of being on film and what's going out to, to people um, or that she doesn't, can't get a word in. If you could say anything to her, what would it be? I'd just shake her. <laughs> and say, come back, I'd shake her Lisa. and say, come on, Lisa, you can do it, you can do it. Let, let your personality through, because she, she's great. She's really good fun. What about her and, I mean, you know, people want to see romance. What do you think about her and Ben? Do you think there's something? Because I think if they got married, they would the be house. the most exciting couple <laughs> since Mike and Carol Brady. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe, like, Sarah Marie could be Cindy and Johnny could be Alice and they could, like, twist the show a little. But uh, what, what do you love? You like seeing bitching and sexual interludes, do you? Oh, that's just at home. But on the show, <laughs> on the show, I, lo I mean, I love Sarah Marie, I have to say, because she, like, you know, she's a fuller-figured girl. She just got, doesn't care. She gets out. She knows that she rubs people up the wrong way, but she just lives. And Lisa, I'm sure she's very nice. I think she's very pretty and pleasant. But, you know, it's national television. You have to give something. And I don't know if they're cutting out the three seconds where she's awake, <laughs> but she's not giving a lot. I mean, everyone wants them to be interesting and wants them to be good. And you do sit there waiting. And I saw something very weird in the shower, which you might have seen of Lisa. Oh, I, I noticed that her bum crack is that way from sitting <laughs> on the fence. <laughs> like, she's got to give, hasn't she? When she went into the house, what was her goal? Um, Lisa was wanting to do something new. Television's always appealed to her and she's often said she'd like to be the next Ernie Dingo, female Ernie Dingo. Um, yeah, a presenter's job, something like what, you're doing. So, she, what, so you think she, the way she's presenting herself will get her a television... What, Gardening Australia? She's got another night. She's got another night to get out there and be live. <laughs> 
So, does she have a lot of boys chasing after her? She does have a lot of boys chasing after her. Yeah, heaps. Heaps of blokes? Heaps of blokes. What do they like about her? They love her look, her personality, her laugh. The yeah. person... Who are these guys? Do you blow them up at night or something? <laughs> We're going to leave it there, okay? okay? We've had a good, clean debate. We're going to leave it right there. We will see how Lisa goes this Sunday night on the big eviction night. Now it is time to throw the nets off the back of the boat and trawl through the teeming schools of media bites about Big Brother this week. The latest issue of Ralph magazine features our very own ballerina in the bath. This squeaky clean photograph of Christina was apparently taken over a year ago. Wonder what other surprises she has up her sleeve. Still on bathing news, the papers followed every step of Todd's first week outside the house, labelling him smelly and pongy. He was also on Rove Live, where he judged the best mullet competition. The silliest stunt of the week was pulled by a skydiver who launched an aerial assault on the house. The skydiver was taken away by police. Johnny has scored another cover shot, this time on Queensland's Q News. Meanwhile, Sydney's Daily Telegraph called him a backstabbing bitch. Behind his back, of course. On bigbrother.com.au, we ran our own poll to see if you think Johnny really is rotten. 44% voted him the killing comforter. 39% believe he's playing the ultimate game. Evictee Shana told all to New Weekly. Who snored, who burped, who annoyed her? The mag also ran a steamy picture of Andy and Sarah Marie touching tongues. Andy was nearly mobbed by teenage fans when she appeared at Channel V's weekly party at Sydney's Fox Studios. She's also being shadowed by a visiting Brazilian TV crew. Você é homossexual. Oh, terrível. Não, você é péssimo, não, não. Don't forget, you can add your voice to the chorus of Australians voting on Big Brother. To see Gordon go back to where he came from, vote on 1902 555 To liberate Lisa from the house, call 1902 555 And for Pete's passage to freedom, dial 1902 555 In less than 24 hours' time, someone's game is up. It's not my decision, it's not the producer's decision. It's not decided by the government or by coded messages sent to us by mutant space aliens. It's your call. You shape this house and you will whittle it down to the winner in 50 days' time. Tomorrow night, those huge eviction doors swing open and the fourth housemate will join me on this stage. How will they handle the return to reality? The tears, the joy, the incredible emotion of eviction. See it all right here live at 7.30pm tomorrow night. It's big. It's really big. It's Big Brother. G'day betters here. Catch more news and gossip from the Big Brother house with regular updates on Triple M or read about it in the Sunday Herald Sun. Big Brother.